Well, today's video is all about thinking about parts and holes. So we're going to think about lots of kind of real world examples. Yesterday, we tied into your natural knowledge of fractions by thinking about division. And today, again, it's going to be about thinking about parts and holes. Now, it's going to be very difficult today thinking what the answer to questions exactly is. So again, it might be even in the answers to your independent tasks. I've given one opinion, you give another one. Again, I would kind of encourage that. Um, so we're going to start with a little recap from yesterday and then we're going to dig into those parts and holes. To start off with a little recap from yesterday. So the task that you were set was this. So we had four girls sharing five pizzas and then we had six boys sharing seven pizzas and we're asking who got more pizza or did they get the same? Well, let's have a little look. So starting off uh, with the girls, well, they'll have one each um, and then that leaves one. So that's five pizzas in total. So that last pizza will be shared equally between the four girls. And so in total, each girl will get one and a quarter pizzas each. Well, what about the boys? So six boys, seven pizzas. So they'll have one each. And then that last pizza will be shared between uh, those six boys. Um, so how many will the boys have? They, in total, they'll have one and a sixth of a pizza each. So we can see by looking at those images that one and a quarter pizzas, well, that is more than one of a sixth of a pizza. So I also wanted to have a look at yesterday's extension task. Uh, so four children are about to share some pizzas. Then Harry joins them. He brings another pizza to share. Now that Harry has come, will each child have more, less, or the same amount of pizza? Well, let's say here they are. Here are the four friends. And, and let's say they had four pizzas. So in total, that would be one each. And then if Harry comes and he brings a pizza, well, there's no change. We, we've got one pizza each. Although, what about if this was a situation, if the four friends had five pizzas, then they would have more than one pizza each. Now, if Harry comes and he brings his pizza, they'd still got, have more than one each. But let's have a look. Before Harry came, they had one each. And then they would share this pizza and they get a quarter of this pizza. When Harry puts this one in the mix, they still will get one each. So there'll be five children with one pizza. But then we'll have to split this pizza into five parts. So then we'd have less. But what about this? Let's say they had three pizzas, these four children. Um, so then they would each have, they could have a quarter of this one each, a quarter of this one each, a quarter of that one. They'd have three quarters in total but they had less than one each. Then Harry came and he put his one in. So then it's four pizzas between five children. So they'd still have less than one, but this time they'd have a little bit more because each time we get one extra pizza, it's like we're closer to having a whole one. So I could actually split each of the one, two, three, four pizzas into five parts and I would have four fifths and I'd be just a fifth away from having a whole pizza rather than a quarter. So to answer the question, well, it depends how many pizzas they had at first. Was it four? Was it more than four? Or was it less than four? Now, let's again just build a little bit further from yesterday uh, with a which answer question. Um, so nine boiled eggs shared between four people. How many eggs each? I've given this question to children before and I tend to get one of these three answers. So is the answer A, two eggs each? Is the answer B, four ninths of an egg each? Or is the answer C, they'll get two and a quarter eggs each? Uh, pause the video, see what you think for this one. Okay, let's have a look. Now there's one answer that is incorrect for sure. So nine boiled eggs shared between four people. The mistake here is thinking that it is confusing the order of the four and the nine because I'll have nine boiled eggs is the number that we're sharing between four people. So I'll have more than, well, two or more than two each. Um, so four ninths is incorrect. Now you might be thinking it's two eggs each or you might be thinking it's two and a quarter each. And I think both could be considered correct um, because you might think, well, a boiled egg, um, I don't know if I'd cut up a boiled egg into quarters um, because if I've got nine shared between four, well, that would be two each, and then there'd be one more boiled egg to share. But would we want to share one boiled egg and split it into quarters? I'm not sure. So the answer there could actually either be A, or it could be C. And of course, this question is based on that context. The same calculation, nine divided by four, with a different context, like pizzas, and I probably would divide it up um, and use those fractions.
So today's video is called Comparing Parts. We're again really going to dig into the big ideas behind fractions, which is about comparing parts and wholes. It's going to involve a lot of estimation, a lot of really deep thinking, and it's really going to lay a firm foundation when you have to find different fractions. Now, let's think about parts and wholes, and let's start by thinking about a head and legendary basketball player Michael Jordan. So if I'm describing a head as a part, then I've got to think, well, what's the whole if the head is the part? So I might say a head is a part of our body. Um, but if I describe uh, the head as being the whole, I have to think, well, what are the parts that make up the head? So I might say, for example, a fa your face is part of your head um, or your ear is part of your head. So there's a smaller part there. Let's say Brazil. Um, if I'm describing Brazil as a part, I could say Brazil, country here, is part of South America. But if Brazil is the whole, I could say that, let's say Rio de Janeiro, this city here, is a part of Brazil. Or I could say the Amazon Basin, so you can see the Amazon River here. The Amazon Basin, which is around here, is a part of Brazil. So the Amazon Basin is a larger part of Brazil than Rio de Janeiro is. Let's see if you can come up with some examples. Again, we're back to pizza, but not the way it's usually used in fractions. So I wonder if you can describe a small part of a pizza, a large part of a pizza, and a pizza as a part. What is it a part of? Uh, pause the video and give those examples. OK, so for this one, we could say that a small part of a pizza is, let's say, the olives. Um, a large part of the pizza is maybe the pizza dough and um, the base is, is probably most of the pizza um, and a pizza is a part well it could be that a pizza is a part of a buffet meal for example now we're going to have a look at parts and holes and relative sizes of fractions so I, I, I've done some examples some pictures to help understand this I hope the fraction of the school that is the kitchen compared to the fraction of your house that is the kitchen now, of course, this will vary on where you live, your house or your flat, or wherever you live, um, and the size of your school and the size of its kitchen. Generally speaking, a school kitchen will be bigger than a kitchen in a home. But the fraction of a school that is the kitchen is smaller than the fraction of a home that is the kitchen. Because even though the kitchen is bigger in a school, the whole building is so much bigger compared to the size of the kitchen. I could fit much more of this size piece inside of the hole, as opposed to a house or a home where your kitchen, even though it's slightly smaller than the kitchen in the school, you could you could fit. It's not as many to fill the in comparison to the whole size of the of the house. Um, similarly, let's have a look at these examples, which will revolve around time. So if we're looking at the amount of time you're asleep in one night, uh, the uh, the amount of a year that is one season that is spring and the amount of time that I'm talking in one maths video well the amount I'm talking in one maths video is the shortest amount of time then it's the amount of time you'll sleep one night and then it is the length of a season of the year but let's say we're looking at the fraction of one day that you were asleep compared to the fraction of a year that is spring compared to the fraction of a maths video that I'm talking well I talk for most of a maths video so even though compared to the other lengths of time it's less, as a fraction it's more, because it's more than half. Then the next um, largest one would be the fraction of one day you're asleep. So let's say here you're asleep for 10 hours, you're awake for 14 hours. It's less than half, but it's more than a quarter, which is the fraction of a year that is spring. Uh, another example, Europe as a part of the world. So we could say that Europe is a relatively small part of the world. Whereas England is a part of Britain, England is a relatively large part of Britain. Now, of course, Europe is bigger than England, but Europe compared to the whole world is a smaller part than England as a part of Britain. So I've got some examples and here, even though they're very different examples, compare them by comparing the fractions. I wonder what you think is the larger fraction. The neck is a part of a giraffe. The frame as a fraction of a bike or an hour as a part of a day. What do you think there? Pause the video. 
Okay, let's have a look. Well, I would say definitely the shortest one is an hour as a part of a day. And this one I can actually calculate exactly because an hour is one twenty-fourth of a day. Whereas the other two examples I'd have to estimate and it might vary depending on which giraffe and which bike. Um, now, you might disagree with me here, but I think, I think next I would say the neck is a part of a giraffe. It looks to me, I don't know, maybe slightly less than half if we have the body and the legs and everything together. Whereas I think the frame is slightly more than half of a bike. Um, but again, they're, they're fairly close, those examples there. Okay. Now, sometimes we can say exactly what fraction we have. And sometimes we can only estimate. So let's have a look at these two examples here. Particularly if I can measure them, you might just be able to kind of see almost that these sections are the same size. Now, I know that this orange part is a sixth. Now, you might be thinking, well, there's one, two, three, four, five boxes, Gareth. But of course, they're not equal sizes. And if I put a line here, I'd have six equally sized pieces. So this part, I could fit six of them in a hole. So this is exactly a sixth. Now, this part here, I don't know exactly what fraction it is of the whole. I can't work that out, I don't have enough information, I, I can't see exactly. Um, I could estimate though, and I could think how many of this part would fit in the hole? Well, I think it would be around about, I could fit five of them in the hole. So I think that would be about a fifth. But I can only estimate that that's a fifth, I don't know exactly. So have a look at these examples here. Can you say exactly what the fraction is? Or do you have to estimate what you think the fraction could be? Pause the video for those four examples. Okay, well, let's have a look. Uh, the left-hand example, that is exactly three eighths because I've got three parts out of eight parts in total and they're all equally sized parts. Uh, the second example, that's exactly an eighth. Um, particularly if I could tell if I could measure and I know that this is exactly halfway here and that this height is the same as this height. If I just put those lines in there, then I would have all equal parts. I could fit eight of this part in the hole. Uh, the next example, actually I don't know there. I can't quite tell because this part here um, is a different size to this one here. And so it's certainly not an eighth, it's more than that, but we can't tell exactly what fraction it is, but I could only estimate how many of this part could, could fit in the hole. I know that it's less than a quarter, of course, because if it was just this bit, it would be a quarter. Um, but we've got these extra little bits here. I, I would estimate maybe it's about a sixth. Now, the last exa example, I actually do know that this one is a quarter. And the best way I could describe knowing that is if I visualise this piece moving down here, then I would have one of four equally sized strips that are orange. So in that case, I would say that I can say exactly what fraction it is and that it's a quarter. So these independent tasks can be found by clicking on the blue link at the bottom of the video. Um, so for task A, we've got a task A and a task B. Task A, part A, you're gonna have a look at these uh, for animal examples where we, we've got a part of the whole and you've got to order them from the, as fractions from smallest to largest. Then part B, for each pair, uh, circle what you think is the larger fraction of the two examples. And then the question at the bottom asks, which is the larger fraction? Is, is the blue um, part of this hole the larger fraction or is the red part the larger fraction? How do you know? What do you notice? Um, and then similarly for task B, same animals, but then there's this extra little prompt. Think of two of your own examples and where do they fit in the order? So is maybe one of your examples is the smallest fraction, one is somewhere in the middle. Um, but you've got to think of your own two examples using animals with parts and holes. Um, then for part B, we've got these four examples and as fractions, order them from smallest to largest. And then again, part C, for each rectangle, you've got to estimate the fraction that is blue. Now for both of these tasks, what I think are the answers are at the bottom there. And again, you might slightly disagree in, in one case or another. Um, I would welcome all your own examples that you've come up with. Real world examples for fractions, for future videos that we could comment on, where there's a part and there's a whole, or where we could order parts and holes. So please have a go at those, send them through. We're going to really build on this thinking tomorrow. And I will see you then.